Hi everyone, welcome to Sports Biz Sunday and more importantly a massive welcome to Tableau Data 19 and TT Europe. <laughs> so thank you for joining us for a question of Sports Biz Sunday. Uh, the next hour and a half will be an interactive sports themed data quiz um, based on a British TV show, but we'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but just on behalf of all of us, thank you for choosing your time to come and join us today. It's really appreciated and we hope you enjoy it. So my name is Spencer Bauke and I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I'm supporting my uh, hometown, FC Cincinnati. Lovely. I'm James. I'm, I'm living in London at the moment. Uh, I'm English originally. I'm a big Chelsea fan. So there's three blues across here. And there'll be a bit more uh, discussion about why we're wearing these later on. And I'm Simon Beaumont. Um, I get the least known football team of all of us, so I support Portsmouth in England. Um, so yeah, there is a bit of a sports theme. The question will be based on our three football clubs, um, and we'll explain a little bit about that as we go through. Um, so just for all of you that may not be aware, just a bit of an intro about what Sports Fizz Sunday is. Um, so it started about January last year um, when James reached out to Spencer and I to say all three of us have got a love of sports. Uh, the community is so awesome, so how can we maximize that potential and that energy and enthusiasm and create a bit of a sports data community? So we hope that we bring together the passion of sports, the passion of data with the awesomeness of you all um, and that's what creates Sports with Sunday. Um, just a bit about what we do. So uh, we try and showcase sports visits. Um, so if you do publish a viz in Tableau and Tableau Public, please do um, include the hashtag Sports Viz Sunday if you tweet it out. Uh, we try and search across that every week. We try and promote the great work everyone does. Um, and Spence also does a weekly roundup of some of the best sports visits that have been shared. Um, but probably the biggest thing that we do is a monthly challenge. So we want to try in really inspired by Makeover Monday, by Project House Viz, by Workout Wednesday, Viz for Social Good. We wanted to try and give people the opportunity to take a sporting data set and be inspired to participate in the community. So every month we will choose a sport based on a theme that is happening that month. So this month it's the Women's World Cup. Last month it was the Cricket World Cup. Um, and we will share a data set based on that sporting event. We then upload it to data.world and our website, and we will then encourage all of you to download that data set, and you will have a month to create a viz. Uh, you can then publish those vizs to Tableau Public, you can publish it to data.world, and we do a monthly summary, and really the whole idea is to just showcase the great work that's out there and maximize the enthusiasm and the energy of the community. Um, it's fair to say we've been quite um, thankful that we've had numerous participations. Spence, you want to just go and do the thing? So we have had numerous participations, um, and last year we had over 100 visits. We've actually got, which uh, Spence will be up in two seconds, uh, we've actually got a Tableau public viz that we use to showcase all of the visits that were created last year. So if you do want some inspiration, you are more than welcome to go on to those. And, sorry, James. Yeah, so that is our Sports Viz Sunday viz at the bottom of it. We also showcase all of the visits with a click through so you can access all the visits that were created last year across the community. Um, hopefully that will give you the opportunity to learn from some of the techniques, be inspired and hopefully reach out to those authors so you can connect with them and learn from them. So without further ado, I will hand over to James, so that's enough of us. We'll just explain what this, morning, this afternoon is going to be, the format of it, and then we'll get straight into the visit and the question. Thank you. I have a clicker. Lovely. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today. Um, when we started thinking about what our session would be about, we wanted to do something a little bit different. We wanted to draw the best from sports, which is competition, and it's taking uh, data and, and bringing it all together to do something that is slightly different. It's interactive, and it will hopefully get you meeting people on your tables and and getting excited about using sports and data together to learn. So, we came to this, uh, this horrific picture of the three of us imposed onto a, a famous BBC show called A Question of Sport. So we've taken Question of Sport, we've thrown Viz Sunday on the end of it, and we've got to A Question of Sports Viz Sunday. 
So what you've got to look forward to is two rounds of friendly competitive uh, competition. First one, we're gonna do an exploratory analytics approach. So the first data set that we've given you is a variation on, on this month's challenge, which is the Women's World Cup. It's going on at the moment, it's all very exciting. Uh, and you're going to go through and you're gonna answer a series of questions on your table. Then we're gonna have a, a half-time Q&A panel, so we've got some wonderful, uh, wonderful guest hosts that have been part of the community right from the beginning, and some of them are gonna uh, sit up here, uh, and you guys are gonna have the opportunity to throw some questions their way, um, and we've got a couple of questions lined up as well. And then finally, we've got part two, which is very much a Workout Wednesday style uh, kind of um, competition again, and it's based on the home and away part of uh, of question of sport. So we're gonna give you a visualization that you're going to have to recreate, a sports visualization, one of Spencer's, and you're gonna go and, and recreate that, and then we're gonna show you how, how it's done. So I think we've got a few, few different aims today. We want you to get to know people in the room, so hopefully you've, you've distributed yourselves onto the tables and there's, there's someone that you don't know on your table that you will know after this session and hopefully you've been brought together by your, your interest in data, but also your interest in sport, and so there's already something that's, that's common and you can, you can have a chat around that. But you'll also be working in a, in a team, so it gives the opportunity to, if you don't have a laptop, work with someone else, and so on. Next, learn about the Women's World Cup, so that's the sports data that we've chosen for this particular uh, competition, and it's, it's quite a big data set, and I think the, the Women's World Cup this year is it's quite high, high profile. It's, it's had more in the media about it than in recent years. Uh, and there's obviously a lot of different countries here, so everyone will be rooting for their, their own different countries in that. Next is we want to take, get you learning about Tableau. That's why we're all here at the Tableau conference. We want you to, to take away some tips from uh, both round one some design, some ideas about how uh, some of our hosts have done their work in, in the past as well. And then uh, in round two, more, more technical stuff, understanding how to recreate things, and, and hopefully by going through that, it will give you the opportunity to learn about, uh, about how Spencer made his bid. And then final takeaway is just to, to feel inspired. This is the first session. We're, we're very lucky and we're very grateful to be the first session here, so there's lots of enthusiasm, lots of excitement, and. Uh, we want to get everyone excited about the next few days that everyone's spending together and, and also about sports data, and so hopefully you'll take this away and uh, you'll feel like using sports data, for, certainly for the three of us, has been a really good way of um, both connecting to the wider community and also learning Tableau as a product, learning the, the, the possibilities that you can use it for. So those are our aims. With that, we are going to move swiftly on to you doing the work and, uh, and round one. So we've got 20 minutes, we've got 10 questions, so two minutes per question. We designed this with the fact that as an individual, you shouldn't be able to, to complete all 10 questions within the 20 minutes, so you are going to have to work as a team. Uh, unless you're a, a super whiz, uh, I think most people will struggle to, to answer these, these 10 questions within the 20 minutes, so Work together, get to know the people in your table. Maybe you want to have one person focusing on the, the harder questions, one person focusing on the easier ones, getting the easier points on board. Um, and that takes us nicely onto the three different levels we've got. So you'll notice that we are in our, our favorite sports team's uh, football shirts. Spencer here is the medium one, so we've got three points for a correct answer in the medium. He was going to be in his Arsenal shirt, but he was too ashamed to wear it after their defeat, defeat in the Europa League hall. And then we've got Simon over there up on the stage, who is in his Portsmouth shirt. He's probably the only true fan amongst the three of us. Uh, that's one point for the easier question. And then naturally the, the harder questions are with that little Chelsea logo there. So those are the really tough ones. Um, and if you can get those, then kudos to you. So. With that, questions are now live. So we're gonna set up a, a timer up there. We'll give you a bit of an opportunity to uh, get to the questions. Hopefully everyone has been able to get onto the website and download the two data sources. The first one that you're gonna be using is the Women's World Cup one. I think it's called Women's Squads. Uh, it's an Excel file with a series of tabs. 
and Simon has put the, the questions onto his Tableau Public. So if you go onto his Tableau Public, either at the link there or just search Simon Beaumont uh, when you are on, uh, on Tableau Public, and then there's several dashboards that uh, have each of the different questions. So one thing to note, on the left-hand side of each of the dashboards, you'll see which tab or tabs, so you may have to join some data together to get to the answers, which tab um, the, the questions are related to. So for two of them, there are three questions related to uh, a particular tab, and then on the last one, there's four questions related to, to that particular tab. So we are gonna be wandering around, and we're gonna be uh, helping you seeing how things are going, but with that, I shall first ask if there are any questions. If, it, if anyone has any questions now, just raise your hand and we'll try and get round to you. If not, we've got 20 minutes on the screen and we've got a bit of a funky background and some music, hopefully. And I think uh, with that, we are ready to kick off. So over to you guys, 20 minutes. You can probably turn that down. If anyone has any issues or questions, then raise your hand and one of us will come round and... Uh... Yeah. A good point on the, uh, where you're writing it down. So once you've got an answer to a question, just jot it down somewhere, either on paper or uh, in a note on your computer, and we will go through all the answers at the end. Right, <clears throat> so how this is going to work now, we've got uh, 10 questions, so 10 answers. We'd like you to calculate your, your scores based on uh, where you are in your groups. So if you've been working in a two, calculate it as a two. If you've been working as a table, uh, work it out as a table. Hopefully it's not too unfair. I know the bigger teams will, in theory, have an unfair advantage, but it's friendly competition, and hopefully you have learnt uh, about it and, and, and learn more about Tableau as the process goes on. So, next slide up. Uh, if you'd like to just, just mark your answers based on the answers that we've got on the slide in a second, within your groups, we trust you to mark your own, and then uh, once everyone has calculated their scores, we'll, uh, we'll run through, and we've got a few prizes for, for the winning table or for the winning group. So. I shall reveal the answers, and we're going we're gonna to briefly talk through how to do some of the harder ones, and then uh, we're going to release a, a workbook on Tableau Public so that you can actually see how to do all the, uh, all the questions individually. Uh, yeah, quick reminder on the point scoring system. Remember, whenever you see that Portsmouth logo, uh, it is a one. In fact, I'm just going to read these out because it's going to be easier. I don't think we have the, the logos next to the questions, so... Here we go, for question one on the performance tab, and for one point, <laughs> the answer is 2011. Question two, this one is for three points. You need both answers, New Zealand and England. Question three, this one's for five points is 33%, and just ignore the decimal places, 33%, anything in that, that ballpark, 33% is fine. Next up, moving on to the squads tab, we've got, for one point, the answer is 21. For three points, I feel like I'm gonna do this person a disservice, we have Kanjana Sung Ngun. Oh, that works. And for five points, we have number three, Christine Sinclair and 168.5. Both answers to get those five points. Next up, results and host tabs. So you, you would have had to join these together to get some of the answers here. For one point, number one is 110. <laughs> <laughs> 
for three points, question two in this one is one nil. That's, that's zero, in case I, you know, I was confused. One zero, <laughs> one nil. Uh, for question three, which was also for three points, you need each of these answers. The answer is the US in 1999 with 21 goals. And then final question, first question four, I think this one was potentially the most difficult. So if anyone, anyone got this, congratulations. The answer is minus 0.048, and yes, it is significant. So with that, uh, we'd like you guys to total up your scores, and the, the maximum that you could have got was 30 points. So we're just gonna do a little countdown to see if we can rule, rule people out. And then the winning table, we will have a, a few prizes to give out. So I'll just give you a second to, to count that up. Everyone done? Everyone counted their score? So, did anyone, did anyone get the full 30 points? If you just raise your hand when you, when you hear the, uh, the right number, did anyone get full 30 points? Did anyone get higher than 25 points? 25 points. Anyone 25 points? <laughs> Down to 20 points. Anyone get 20 points? 20 points or higher? Oh, okay. Here we, we go. 20? Anyone else with 20? It looks like we have our first prize winner. How, how many? Were you working as a team 20, or an individual? We have 24 over here. Anyone more than 24? How many? How many? 26? Does this need to be verified or can we, can we trust this score? Yes, this is on the honor system. <laughs> okay, congratulations. So we have our winners. So you folks are the uh, Sports Beer Sunday round one champions. And with that, I uh, hope you were able to learn something. As I said, the, the answers to every single question there will be published in a, a Tableau public workbook. So you can uh, actually go through and, and understand how each of the answers, um, you can get to them. So, Simon, do we have time to quickly run through them or do you wanna move on? Two minutes, okay. Very briefly then, um, a couple of them for those looking at the, the slightly harder ones. To get to the uh, answer for the, the hard question on the, the first group, so this one was all about creating a point system. It was using an if, else, or I saw a couple of using a, a case, a case when, just assigning this point system to the, the various position that they finished. Uh, and then you could calculate a final score. And then the final part was then just doing a a quick table calculation to get the percent of the total. So that one was the US, which is uh, it's quite astonishing that of all the World's Cup, they've, they've won 33% on this, this scoring scheme. So congratulations to Spencer's country there. Next one was another table calculation. This was calculating the difference from the average, um, but it was, it was going a bit a step further and actually deciding what to compute it using. So it wasn't just using table down or table across. It was looking at the country and the player and then making sure that it restarted every country. So, fairly rushed description of this. As I said, this, is, this will be on uh, Tableau Public so you can actually reverse engineer these, work out how to get them if you're interested. And then the final one, this was using our analytics pane. So up there on the, on the top left-hand corner, you've got all your fields and then you've also got the analytics pane where you can drag across that trend line. And Hovering over the, the trend line gives you a little bit of information, but then if you want to drill down further and actually understand the statistical model that is behind it, you can go on describe uh, trend line or describe model, and it'll give you uh, stuff like the, the R squared value, which describes the, the fit to the model, the fit to the line in this case, um, and then the P value, which indicates whether it is significant or not based on the information that you're looking at. So, very quick run through there, um, but hopefully if you enjoyed it and you, you've got the curiosity to go and explore 
the, uh, the full set of answers and how to get to them, then we will put that on, on Tableau Public and you can browse through it to your heart's content. With that, we have reached half time, so half time whistle is blown, and we would like to invite our wonderful panel to, uh, to come forward to these chairs. Room layout's a bit, bit strange. I think it worked better to have everyone in the table so they could be on their laptops. Um, but we've positioned our host over there in those seats. So if you'd like to stand up, step forward, head to your, to your chairs, and a uh, big round of applause to our wonderful host, please. So the next 15 minutes is going to be a Q&A with our dream team. Um, so just to introduce you to who all of them are, we have on the right, uh, Orna Eden, who is Workout Wednesday, um, co-host, Northwest Tug, uh, host, and, tab <laughs> and Tableau Ambassador. Uh, hopefully, Lorna, I haven't missed anything there. Uh, next up, and Tableau Tip Tuesday. Yes. Good shout. Uh, next up, we have Neil Richards, uh, Tableau Ambassador 2018, uh, Zen Master, Viz for Social Good Community Lead, um, and general all round uh, genius. We then have the prof, uh, Klaus Short, who was last year's Tableau Europe Iron Viz winner and is a current Tableau Zen Master and I think you'll be hearing him um, speak about the magic of a couple of visits, visits with Ludovic later uh, this week. And lastly, we have Sam Parsons. Sam was runner-up in the Iron Viz feeder for agriculture in the global feeder and has also, um, we've been really fortunate, had a quite incredible Viz of the day for his Six Nations Rugby Viz that he did as part of our um, challenge earlier in the year. Um, the reason we chose all these four people, um, A, they are amazing, but they have all been guest hosts for Sports Viz Sunday over the last year. So a massive thank you to all that you've done to help promote, support the community and encourage them. So we're going to have about 10 minutes of Q&A. Um, so if anyone has got a question for them, it doesn't have to be sports related. Um, you could ask whatever you like, but just to kick off, um, where's your go-to sources of inspiration for data when it comes to visits, um, whether it be sports or otherwise? Sam? Um, so, uh, I don't really have a website that I t tend to go to. What I do with my sports viz stuff is um, I tend to um, try and create it myself. So, sorry. And um, so, what I'm really interested in, and there's not very much data around for with um, rugby union sort of data. So I go to ESPN and I will scrape the data from ESPN and I will convert it in and I'll connect to it with Tableau. Yeah, it's almost the same with me. Um, I, I create the data almost every time manually. I'm, I'm doing a lot of um, copy and pasting in Excel. Um, and uh, I choose the topics mainly based on my um, on, on my favorite topics. I like soccer. I like to go skiing in, in, in the winter, and therefore these are my topics uh, where I visit on. And yeah, I do it quite manually to get the data. And same for me, really. Most things are really manual. Quite often, I'll just sit and type things into um, into Excel. I mean. You probably all know to be into sports and data, you have to be a bit of a data nerd. And, and I've sort of loved playing around with data and writing it down since long before the internet was invented. You know, I used to write cricket scores down and stuff like that. So it's not really a hardship to, to sort of, to find that data is all in different places. But that said, Google is your friend. If you fancy doing a viz on a particular sport and you go and you Google something, you know, like when I decided to do a viz on curling the other month, there was stuff on curling websites, all linked to the Winter Olympics. If you find it, copy it, paste it, you know, um, reshape it however you want. Um, most sports are a mine of data, and that's what's so good about it. So just have a look. Um, for data viz inspiration, um, Pinterest is really good. So if you've got a topic, then just search that topic plus infographic at the end. And then you can um, get some inspiration from your Pinterest boards. So it's more infographics than interactives, but it's definitely worth looking on there for it. 
Um, just to let everyone know, the reason we wanted to ask that question, I think too many people assume that to do a viz, you need to be able to have R or be able to scrape and automate a data source. Actually, you know what? Most of the viz's probably you see on Tableau Public, they're in all of, are done via just simple, put it into Excel and load it into Tableau Public. So sometimes don't overcomplicate it, just jump in um, and start, and that's probably the best way of exploring sports data. Um, just so you're all aware, all of the data sources that we've done as part of SportsViz Sunday over the last now 18 months are all available on our website. So if you did want to download and jump in and do something yourself, we've covered golf, football, tennis, rugby union, uh, the Winter Olympics, F1, it goes on and on. Um, and rugby league, sorry. It's a different type of rugby if anyone's not quite sure. Um, but they are all on there, so if you do want to explore it, feel free to just jump on the website. They're all downloadable in Excel, um, and hopefully that'll be a good place to start. Just very quickly add to that. Um, that Jake, is it Jacob Olsufka has done a, a post, um, and he goes through and he lists his favorite data sources. So if you are lacking inspiration and you don't know where to go and find data, you need to go and have a look around. He's done a really good post that you can find if you just search that, uh, that, that goes through all the different data sources that um, so last question from us, guys, um, and then over to the room for ask a few questions. Uh, when approaching a data viz, sport or otherwise, um, what's your general kind of approach when it comes to design thinking and how do you start doing a viz? Is it sketching out? Is it jumping in? Is it exploring? Um, I'd just be really interested to know, especially because you've all done so many vizs, kind of how you think you go about it. Lorna? Um, the past two iron vizs, I've actually drawn them out. So um, I've got either post-it notes, I think my last one was. So I, because of, I did a, basically a game in, in, our, in, in Tableau, um, I mapped the process out on post-it so I could see where I needed to go from and to using the buttons and dashboard actions. But otherwise I use my iPad to draw out as well and my... Uh, latest eye invis looked identical to my drawing, so I was pretty happy with that. Um, if anyone wants to see what's possible in Tableau, just go on to Lorna's profile and see that eye invis feeder, because it was pretty amazing to consider that was done in Tableau. Yeah, I'd second that. Um, in, in terms of my design process, um, if I'm doing a sports viz, chances are it's a personal viz, so I'm just doing something for fun. So I have all sorts of different design processes, something that I'm going to enjoy doing. Um, I'm sort of quite famous for just finding weird things that are, whether it's an album cover or things like that. I've turned album covers into cricket scores and things like that. So it, it really doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can take your inspiration from anything, whether it's something you're designing yourself or something you've seen. Um, my last one on the, uh, the Women's World Cup, there was a, a a FIFA World Cup one that I liked so much that I just contacted the um, designer and I said, do you mind if I do exactly the same as yours, but just with um, a different data set? And she said, yes, of course, go ahead, do it. So um, you can take your inspiration from anywhere, um, whether it's whether you want to adapt something or it's something you've seen. Um, someone answered your question, all sorts of things. Yeah, I try to, um, I think when you visit sports data, there are often natural analogies to the sport that you are visiting. I did, for example, a vis on triple jump, and uh, it shows a jump plot to visualize the jumps of a triple jump. Or I did a vis on alpine skiing, and I did some curvy lines, and it looked finally um, as like a like a downhill ride, um, the hill. Um, so I try to yeah, search for natural analogies to, to the sport itself, and, and I think there's a lot possible when you try to do this. And uh, Klaus did a, was it the luge, um, German luge, where he did it as a German flag? Uh, that was probably one of my favorites when you did that. Um, so very similar to the others. Um, where I start is normally with pen and paper. I'll just sketch stuff out, just different ideas. Whether or not I think I can actually do it in Tableau, um, that doesn't really hold me back. I just put, the, put it down on paper, and then I try and work out how do I do it in Tableau. Um, Tableau's brilliant because it's so flexible, as you all know. Um, you can pretty much do anything you want if you put the time in. Um, so that's really where I start, is pen and paper. And the same as Lorna, I use Pinterest for my inspiration. And it doesn't need to be other sports visits, it can be anything.
And if you do want to check out their data design approach, I think Neil, Klaus, and Sam, you've got a Viz, in the Viz gallery. Um, so check that out, and you can see, sorry, Lorna. Um, you can see kind of their work and how they've designed it. Um, I think you've got a Boris Becker Viz, a Six Nations Viz, and a small, country. small countries multiple. Yeah. Cool. Right, so that was our um, questions. We've got five minutes. So does anyone in the room, you've got kind of um, data rock stars in front of you. Um, is there any question you'd like to ask? And thank you for being close so I don't have to run to the back. <laughs> So what was the longest uh, viz that you worked on? How long did it take you to, to finalize one from the idea itself until you, you actually were happy with it? Um, that was quite easy. So that is the Six Nations one that's in the gallery for me. Um, so I hosted that, that data set for the Sports Viz Sunday, but um, I had an advantage that I knew what I was putting together before I released it to everybody else. So I spent two months working away. I, um, I'm very particular about how I do my visits, so I iterate and iterate and iterate until I get what I want. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot of time and effort. Same for me, um, and especially when, you, when you're in a collaboration with someone else, then the process is even uh, longer and more difficult. You have more iterations and a lot to chat about. And the Boris Becker Viz that you can see in the Viz Gallery has, uh, has taken also two months. What I find is that if I'm doing a viz, then quite often I sort of um, I forget what I'm doing, and I, I I sit and look through the data and I learn more. I, my last Women's World Cup um, viz that I did, I didn't know very much about the Women's World Cup, so the actual viz part didn't take me too long. But I I just went down rabbit holes and and started reading about the 1991 Women's World Cup and things like that. And you know, if I saw an interesting result, I'd go and and look into it. So that's why I always recommend viz about stuff that you really quite enjoy. Like in my case, it's quite often sports data. Um, if it's a personal project, then sometimes it can take a long time. But that might be because you got distracted and you found out more. You know, you 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 did your own visual analysis while you were doing it and while you were sort of staring at the data. So. Um, yeah, they can take a, a while, but they're usually personal projects and sort of done in, in spare time, so it's hard to quantify. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, no, so normally I'm visiting for Iron Viz, um, so we have set deadlines, so it takes like a month to do it, but that's normally including data prep and then doing your data viz as well. But I have actually done a personal viz in a day once, that was quite cool. Cool. Um, any other, we've got time for probably one more question. Anyone got any in the room that you'd like to ask? In which case, I'll ask one on behalf of you. What would be your biggest tip for people that are new to Data19 today? And this is their first day at Tableau conference. Uh, what would be... And Sam, I know this is your first conference, so it's a bit harsh to ask. Uh, what would be your tip in terms of to enjoy the next uh, three days of geeking out over Tableau and data? Um, make sure you, even though you want to get out the most of the sessions and you want to go to back-to-back -back sessions, don't do it. Uh, you will burn out by the end of Wednesday and we don't want that. You want high energy by Wednesday so you can take it back to work on Thursday and keep the energy going. So just try and schedule in those breaks and sometimes the breaks are just as important because you can meet new people and get more ideas in those breaks as well. So it's always good to schedule in a break in back-to-back -back sessions. I never do what Lorna just said. Um, but I know I should, uh, you know, the human nature is, it's, it's exciting, it's Tableau, it's what we all like and we're sort of among data nerds. So what I would say is just sort of don't overanalyze it too much. There's so much going on, you won't do everything that you wanted to, but that's okay. Uh, most things are recorded, uh, so if you don't get into a session, don't worry, you can see it afterwards. Just, just meet people, enjoy it, be amongst um, data nerds and, you know, it's better than being at work, isn't it? So. Um, anything you do, you'll, you'll have a good few days. 
Yeah, and maybe one one more thing. Uh, don't be frustrated when one session is sold out and you you can't get in. Um, I think every session here that is um, provided is very, really high quality, and you you can get some nuggets from every session. And um, yeah, that's what I did in the past conferences um, that I attended, um, and shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Um, so, as they said, this is my first conference, but I do have one tip that I've come up with. Um, so, this is the first time that I've met all of these people here. Um, I follow them and I talk to them regularly on Twitter. So, if there's anybody that you follow on Twitter, come up and say hi. Um, that everyone's approachable, that just talk data viz. It's, yeah. And Sam, just on behalf of the group, can I apologise for taking the mickey yesterday and saying that date and night out was a black tie event and seeing if you're going to fall for it, so sorry. Um, but just if I can ask everyone, just say a massive thank you to the four of these. Um, you inspire all of us every single day with your visits, um, and it's been an absolute pleasure to have you support Sports Viz Sunday over last year. So just on behalf of everyone, thank you for what you do, um, and thank you for the time you spent today. So, without further ado, our last and final round before we bring it to a finish today. Um, if you thought the first round was a nice gentle introduction, you've now got something that um, is a little bit more tricky. Um, as Lorna and Luke would be able to say, Workout Wednesday is meant to stretch you. Um, it's meant to help you understand new techniques. So hopefully our resident... Um, equivalent in Spencer will be able to challenge you a bit with one of his visits. That's a stretch, but thank you, Simon. Um, thank you, everyone, again, for coming to the Sports Viz Sunday session. Uh, like Simon just said, uh, over the course of the next 20 minutes, we're going to give you a visualization that's already been created with the goal of recreating as much of the visualization as possible. Uh, now, when we show you the viz, there are uh, three distinct elements of this viz. <clears throat> you don't have to get all of them, okay? This is a time to learn, to kind of dig into maybe some of the calcs or the coloring or formatting, whatever you want to learn, whatever you want to get better at. This is the time to do it. We'll all be walking around the room um, and seeing if we can, you know, help uh, with any of the roadblocks you might be facing. So the data for this viz is also on the Sports Viz Sunday website, right below the data source for uh, the round one. So this is a viz that I did on home runs. Now, I know this is kind of an American sport, but James, uh, I just want to show everyone what a home run looks like, just so that we're all on the same page. Jay Bruce digging in to start tonight. High drive. Left center feet. Racing field, back man. to the wall, Bourgeois. The Reds are National League Central Division champions. Yeah, we got a Red fan in the house. All right. So, that, yeah, that's my hometown, Cincinnati Reds, uh, hitting a walk-off home run. Uh, but that's a home run. You're clearing the, clearing the fence there with the baseball. So there's a special club. If you hit 500 of these guys, you enter the 500 home run club. So that's the data you're going to find. You're going to find uh, in one data set, it's going to be the totals over each player's career and their rank. The second part of the data set will show you every single home run that that player has hit. So um, there's home or away, um, who they face, things like that. But it will give you uh, every single home run ever hit. So each row represents a home run. So like I mentioned, there's three distinct parts of this viz. There's the step chart, uh, or the running total of all of the home runs uh, for each player by their age. And that's something important to note out, uh, is by age. Uh, then there's an average, where we compare three of the home run hitters, Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, and Sammy Sosa, uh, to the rest of the field. The reason we single out these three hitters is there has been some suspicion as to whether they used chemicals to increase their performance, we'll put it that way, performance enhancing drugs. Um, and so what I do is I compare the average of how many home runs that those three players hit at certain ages compared to everybody else. Uh, kind of getting a feel for, hey, did their performance actually improve or was it abnormal for that time in their career? Then the last uh, section of the viz is a small multiple showing the distribution 
of each home run hitter uh, and how many home runs they hit by age so you can see if there's any trends uh, or anything like that um, for specifically the three hitters that we wanted to analyze here. And again, that's Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa, uh, and Mark McGuire. So things to note uh, on this viz, there are little highlight dots at the end of the line chart, but it's only for three uh, of the players, the, the three that I've mentioned before, and there are no dots there on the end of the gray lines, uh, and then coloring appropriately to call attention uh, to the home run hitters that we want to analyze. In the second one, uh, you want to have one dot for the field, we'll call it, and then one dot for uh, the group of three hitters that we want to analyze, and then coloring those dots and lines appropriately is also something that, uh, if you're going to uh, recreate the viz completely, is something that you would want to include. And then the labels. Uh, the labels for the top dots are above it, and the labels for the bottom dots are below it so that they're not blocking uh, the visual visualization. And the last part is creating a small multiple. Uh, and then you have rows in between your small multiples with the rank, name, and home run totals of each hitter. Uh, so you have to figure out how to do that while showing a reference line for the median uh, career home runs uh, by age and banding of the rows and then uh, setting a uh, max career home run label. So those are some aspects of the three vises that you want to include if you're trying to do them uh, exactly the way I did it. Uh, so here they are again, just one more time. Um, you can also see the viz at my public site, um, and there's a link to it uh, in our, um, on our sportsvizsunday.com. So here are the uh, aspects of it again. Again, we want to emphasize, you don't need to do the entire thing. If you can get one part, great. If you get two, awesome. If you can get three, amazing. Uh, so here's the data, just to show you the structure, just quickly before we jump into it. As I mentioned, the left, you have your totals and your home runs by player. And then on the right-hand side, uh, you have details about every single home run that's been hit. So are we ready? OK. Set. 20 minutes, guys. Have fun. Enjoy. Try and learn something. Um, yeah, and go. Have fun. Cool. And I think that is time. So before we hand over to Spencer just to unveil a couple of bits, can we just have a show of hands? Anyone managed to get near or complete the step line chart? Cool. Fair play. Um, anyone, not looking at Lorna, but anyone did the small multiple um, chart? Yeah, you're at an advantage. So <laughs> It was a workout Wednesday a few weeks ago, so you know. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, and lastly, I did see a couple of people try, but anyone get nearish to doing the lollipops? Yeah, I saw someone was really, really close on that one. Yeah, I think Chris was getting there. Cool. So, Spencer, just want to quickly right. guide us through yep. a couple of the answers. Yep. Uh, so, for the running total, the big uh, bit here was the end line. So, you're just going to create your usual running total uh, across the age of the player. Uh, and then for this end total, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, table calc that essentially says that if this, did you get it? Yeah. Woo! All right. Um, if this value is the max uh, and that equals the value that you're looking at right there, something's beeping. I'm not doing that. It'll be the timer, be honest. Oh, the timer. All right. Time's up, guys. All right. Um, Essentially, if that value is the max uh, of that line, does that equal a value? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to want the uh, running sum returned. If that is not the max value, uh, then I'm going to say null. So that's how you get only the dots to appear uh, on there. So that's the you know, tough part, uh, one of the tough parts of that 
uh, element of the viz. Uh, also, like I said, I grouped the set together. And to get the, uh, the dots to not appear on the gray line, you can actually go in to the uh, set. And I did, let's see. I originally did not have them hidden, but you can go in here and you can right click on a group of things that you want it not included in the viz, you include hide or click hide, uh, and those uh, values will no longer be on your viz. Kind of a cool trick there. Um, for the second part, uh, the average by age was two. Uh, Calc's just saying if you're in the set. So actually, there wasn't a uh, there was not a line of or level of detail calc in here. It was just if you're in the set, uh, take your uh, sum of your home runs divided by the count of home run hitters at your age. So you get an average home runs hit by player by age. Um, and then I did a dual axis on measure values and then use the measure names to uh, join those two dots together. And then I create a calc saying that if the difference uh, between the three people we looked at and the field is greater than zero, make it red. If it's not, make it gray. Uh, and then colored it uh, accordingly. And the labels, so what I did on the labels is I did the minimum value uh, for one side of the joint, and then for the other one, I did the uh, maximum value. So one is actually annotating the line, technically, and the one's annotating the dots, but that way you kind of get them outside of the frame of the, the rest of the visualization, so they're not uh, blocking that space. And then in the small multiples, um, I put in attribute one, you can do a max zero, whatever calc right there to get those spacings in between. And what that's actually going to do is it's going to return a line here. Um, let's see, let's choose a different color. So it actually, because it's plotting that line against the rest of the data that you plot. Um, but I just wanted to use annotations. So what I did is I set that to a really light color, actually turn it. Uh, the transparency all the way down so I don't see it anymore. Uh, and then that's when I drag on the uh, attribute of the rank and the player uh, so I can get those to show up in that in-between column. Uh, and then just adding a reference line uh, using the median of each home run uh, hit by year per player. Uh, and then your, your max annotation. So that is... That is time. Those are the tricks. All right. Cool. So thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. So just to wrap up, if we can quickly go back into the slides. So please, oh, so I just click through. <coughs> so can I just say thank you to everyone for coming? Um, we would really appreciate your feedback. So this is a session that we'd love to do at Vegas. We'd love to learn about what we could do better, how we could make it uh, more interactive, more enjoyable for you. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you've met some new people. And more importantly, you've just enjoyed your first session at TC Europe 19. So please do fill out the My Evaluations if you can spare us two minutes. Just to remind everyone that if you want to, you can find our latest challenge on sportsvizsunday.com about the Women's World Cup. And last but not least, we'd like to celebrate everyone being here just with a group photo that Caroline and Jordan, um, who are our Tableau community rock stars, um, to take of everyone.